गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल लीव क्लासेज आई एम एंशली चिल्ड्रेन आई होप ऑल इफ यू हैव वॉच आर एम सी क्यू टेन ऑन टेन सीरीज दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड फॉर सेमेस्टर वन नवम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एज यू नो एज पर द न्यू पैटर्न फॉर सेमेस्टर वन एम सी क्यू एग्जाम्स विल बी देयर सो आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू फ्रेम एज मेनी क्वेश्चन एज आई कैन फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आर देयर इन सेमेस्टर वन राइट चिल्ड्रेन and uh, today is the second video for this series and the topic remains same that is user defined methods children here i want to mention one thing that you don't have to write the complete program in mcq based questions but definitely you should be knowing how to write the program so that any part of the question any statement which is asked in mcq based questions you should be able to give the answer so let us start with today's mcq series the topic remains same user defined methods first question is which of the following is valid return within bracket a semicolon return a both a and b options are correct and none of the above children in my user defined functions video also and in the previous mcq series video also i told you that both return a or return only the variable name both are correct right so please keep this in mind the question is very good and this can confuse you a lot so we have the correct option as option c right children now the second question is calling a method is also termed as children you have two methods in user defined functions one is the caller method and the second is the called method so calling a method when you call a method that term is also known as the options are parameter passing invoking a method method header and none of the above i suppose this is very easy question invoking a method is the correct answer so in the question it can be asked that invoking a method means calling a method or calling a method is also termed as invoking a method so any of uh, the term can be used either calling or invoking a method i hope this is very easy one now we come to question number 3 what will be the return value of the following function test the function name is test and the function body says int a equals to 2 b equals to 3 sum equals to a plus b so let us calculate the value of sum a plus b that is 2 plus 3 this is equals to 5 and pr is equals to a into b that is 2 into 3 is equals to 6 return sum and return pr children whenever you call any function or whenever the function body is executed only one return statement is executed like here two return statements are mentioned return sum and return pr but as soon as return sum will be executed the control will be shifted back to its caller module so return pr will not be executed in that case so your correct answer will be the value of sum that is 5 will be returned so correct answer is option a i hope it is clear to you children the next question says a function designed in such a way that it calls itself in its body is termed as when you write a function and within its body in the body of the function you are calling that function again then that is termed as recursive function right children as per your syllabus you have just the definition and uh, program also since programs are not there in the syllabus so especially for finding factorial we use recursive function uh, so don't get confused with overloaded function recursive that means which calls itself in its body right so the correct answer is recursive function the next question is give the output of the following function function name is test it is taking one parameter of char type print ln int of c if z is passed to c here children if you see this is 
capital upper case z right and one thing which you have to remember is the sky codes of small a to small z capital a to capital z this is very important children you have to prepare these things properly so if we see the sky code of capital a is 65 and capital z is 90 int of c the integer value of capital Z is 90. So this statement system dot out dot print ln will print the value 90. It will not print Z. Integer value of capital of uppercase Z will be printed. That is 90. So the correct option is option C. The next question is. Number of actual and formal parameters must be different, same, may or may not be same. Children always, uh, the actual parameters should match with formal parameters in number and in data types as well. So the correct answer is same. It should be same. The number of actual parameters, that means the parameters which you are using in calling the function should be same as you are writing in function prototype. That should be exactly same. The next question says, which of the following order must be followed in function prototype? The function prototype is known as function header. That means when you write the function body within the braces, before that you write the function prototype. Children here again I would like to tell you that even if you don't remember the function prototype, how it is given in user defined function, but all of you are familiar with uh, main function. So if we see main you write public static void main, right? So, public is the access specifier, that is access specifier. Then we write void. Void is your return type. So, before the function name, you have return type. Then you give the function name and then you write the arguments or the parameter list. Children, please learn this order. So, initially, first we should have then return type, then function name and then parameter list. So option C is the correct answer. Children, please don't get confused. Do not play 50-50 game. You should be knowing everything according to the topic. And this function prototype is very important. Definitely you are going to get one or two questions from this topic from function prototype, right? The next question is sample, uh, you have a program written over here and then you have to give the answer. Class name is sample and the function name, the user defined function name is test. Here it is taking two pa parameters. Children here see public void test INTA. In your question paper only you will get some prototype like this, some output based. So, if you are confused, you can always check the remaining questions for finding the answer, right? Like in the previous question, what it is? Access specifier, void is your return type. This is the function name. This is the parameter list. So, please go through the questions, right? If you are uh, having any doubt in any of the question. Then uh, one variable is declared int type i. i equals to 1. i less than equals to a. i plus plus and print c. This body of this function is over and then main function is written. Here the first thing is creation of the object, sample. Sample is the uh, your class name, then ob is the object name, new sample. Children, this is the statement how you create the object of a given class. int x equals to 5, ch equals to a ob dot x. This is your function signature ob.test. Here the function is called using these two parameters x and c8. Now what the question says, it says name the actual parameters used in this program. 
children here in the function definition these two parameters are written a i n t a n c a r c h and in function calling these two parameters are written please note that the parameters which you use in function calling are termed as actual parameters right so your correct answer is option a that is x and ch these two are the actual parameters i hope it is clear to all of you children please watch the video user defined functions all the parts then you will not find any problem in solving any of the mcq question question number 9 also contains the same program only the question is different the question says name the formal parameters used in the program children please note in the prototype the parameters which are written are termed as formal parameters and in the function calling these parameters are known as actual parameters don't get confused many children they just write the reverse so here a and c are termed as formal parameter so option b is the correct answer right children and the next question is function overloading does not depend on return type type of parameters number of parameters all of the above children here function overloading you should have type of parameters and number of parameters should be different so it depends on these two but it does not depend upon its return type let me give you one example if i have written int sum and say double a and one i have written double sum and double a if you notice here return type is different int and double function name is same and the parameters and its type is also same so this is not a valid example of function overloading this is invalid but if i write the functions like this int sum double a and here if i write double sum and int a this is a valid example so children function overloading does not depend on its return type option a is the correct answer so i suppose all of you have also marked these answers correctly and i wish you all the best for the preparation of Uh, your first semester exams and we will be doing more and more questions and i'll try to finish the syllabus as early as possible children i hope you are enjoying the series and mcq is little interesting also and if you haven't subscribed the channel till now please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you Keep practicing keep solving god bless your children